Oh, hey there. So I want to talk to you about sins of the father and generational curses for a quick second, okay? I remember being 18, 19 years old, something like that, and I went to a church, and they started talking about this stuff, and I'm like, that doesn't apply to me, and I kind of checked out. And somebody goes, yeah, I think you're a prime candidate for this. Like, I think that you're, you're the one we're talking to here. I'm like, you don't know me. And, you know, they started kind of talking about the fact that, so here, here's what the Bible says, okay? The Bible says that he who disobeys the word of God, I will curse them down to the third or fourth generation. That's what it says. But he who obeys God, I will bless them to the thousandth generation. Because God takes it that seriously. He's like, look, there's consequences for sin, but if you even try to do the right thing, I will bless you and your offspring for ever basically i mean a thousand generations is a long time longer in the world than you know whatever anyway um so they start talking about patterns right like a lot of times addiction is passed down and whether it's hereditary or whether it's environmental um it's kind of irrelevant to me because however you grew up there are certain patterns that you don't even understand that you are witnessing and you just think are normal you just think it's perfectly normal for a dad to beat the mom if she doesn't say things. It's perfectly normal for somebody to be like, I'm stressed out, I need a drink. It's perfectly normal for somebody to smoke cigarettes and tell you that you shouldn't smoke cigarettes. It's perfectly normal to run from your problems or to not pay your bills or whatever it may be. At which point we pick up those habits and then we do them, we live our life that way. And then naturally our children do that and their children do that and so on and so forth until somebody goes, well, hold on now. Let me remove myself from this. Let me remove myself from myself and look at this from somebody else's eyes. And it's not impossible to do, okay? You just think, if I wasn't me and I was looking at this situation, how would I respond to this? If I can be objective about this, then how am I really? And then look at that and go, are these patterns normal? And kind of wipe your brain for a little bit and just go, I know I think they are normal, but are they? Like, is there is there a... A standard? Is there a benchmark? Is there some kind of a something that I can compare myself to and go, am I that? Okay, and I think that that happens a lot of times when people experience God. They think I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. And every prophet that's seen God, anybody who's ever seen God, and I had an experience with God rather than seeing Him face to face, they are humbled immediately. They fall to their face, to, to the ground, to their knees, and they say, "Whoa, is to me." because I am a man of unclean lips and I live among a people of unclean lips. All of a sudden, we see the holiness of God and we go, well, I'm not that, I'm not anywhere close. We look ahead and we go, man, these people are getting condemned for way less than what I've done. I have no hope, right? Okay, I remember I, I went, I, I used to get a whole lot of tickets, okay? I used to own a music venue, I used to get a whole lot of tickets. And I showed up to, to a pretrial, what I thought was a pretrial, hearing, which usually is just, do you want to get a jury trial? You want to go, you know, you want to work out a plea deal or whatever. And it's traffic tickets, so calm down. Um, and, you know, I'd always be like, ah, I'm going to take it to jury trial because it would never really go to court and it was a waste of everybody's time. And then I got there one day and there was about 500 people and about 30 cops. I was like, oh, this is the real thing. This is a roundup. They're really going to get money from us. And I was like, which ticket was this? And I remember I was like, oh, this is a bad ticket. This is going to be expensive. And I looked around, I found a lawyer and he did get me out of it. And that's not what I'm advocating for, but um, he got me out of it. Now, I think that when we look at our situation compared to God, to compared to real holiness, and then we go, I'm not that, I'm in trouble. I need to make this right. Look around for an advocate. And I'm telling you, Jesus is that advocate. He's already paid the price for you. And it's time to like get these generational curses out of your life because what you heal in yourself, you don't just heal in yourself. You heal in yourself and everybody that comes after you, right? You, you turn around and you stop the flow of all that badness, of all those generational curses, of all the sins of the father and the consequences that come with them and mother. And, and you block everybody that comes after you from having to deal with that. Now, they're still going to have problems. The world is, we're living under a curse, okay? But they won't have those problems and that will make their life that much easier. And that's what we want for our children. We want our children to have a better life than we had. We want them to not have all the roadblocks that we have. We want the path behind us to be smoother than the path ahead of us. We want the people that come behind us to go, this isn't that bad. And you're like, yeah, you're welcome. Get your life right while you have the chance.
stop these sins of the father, stop these generational curses, and bless your lineage for a thousand generations. Love you guys.